connect out to my TV. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 6th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Good to see all of you. Yep, yep. Makes good radio. <laughs> our <laughs> guests are uh, Boudreaux from Kentucky. Welcome. Hey, hey. Dread Pirate Higgs, all the way from Western Canada. Arr. John Richards from, you're in London, aren't you right around that area? England? No. <laughs> it's just the background. Just yeah, the yeah. background. It's a clever background. I'm on the yeah. south coast, about 50 okay. miles south of London. Uh, oh, cool. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'm willing to bet you're not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, soon to be 1,100. The Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, will tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so stick around. Wombat, what's your topic today? It's just a matter of perception. And maybe Christians were right the whole time. And it's just the way how you look at it. That's all the matter of of influence. But before we get into that, that's what I like to call our our main course, our main dessert. I do like a little bit of an appetizer. I'm sure you guys do too. How about some noodles? We'll throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. I am called to invoke the power of the true creator of the universe, the drunken tolerator of all lesser and more recent gods and maintainer of gravity here on earth. May the great flying spaghetti monster rouse himself from his stupor and let his noodly appendages ground each of us in our seats. Rah, Rah, man. Man. You know, that was such good noodles, but I do like a secondary appetizer called Hair Everyone's Been Doing. How everyone's been doing? We'll start with Dread Pirate Higgs. Wonderful invocation. How you been? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, and this may be an invocation uh, given at... The uh, upcoming um, inaugural council meeting of the, our new our new city council, incoming council. Um, okay. It it's been um, a, you know, an ongoing struggle with the BC humanists to uh, urge uh, municipalities within BC, at least, and throughout other through other provinces, to desist with um, the invocation of the Christian God during any meetings, uh, especially uh, inaugural meetings. Right. Um, but, but this time, in Grand Forks last time, they didn't. It was a purely secular thing. But uh, we have uh, three incoming uh, pretty staunch Christians coming in. So they're, they may try to sneak that in. Uh, yeah. So we're having a contingent um, going to be present at the council meeting uh, in that event so that we can make our own invocation. Right. And, uh, and let them know that they're not representing the only people with uh, with religious beliefs. So sneak peek, we're talking about perception today. I, I see. I see. John, uh, here's my quick point. It's such a shame that we have to waste so much energy on this. You know, people on accounts who have imaginary friends, from my perspective, who now we have to battle and be like, listen, we have to fill out all these paperwork, drive here, do this, rehearse this speech, just so that you don't get a chance to, you know, shift the narrative on your imaginary friend being less imaginary than it actually right. is. What yeah. a waste of time when you could be serving the greater good. John Richards, what do you think? Well, this issue of councils holding prayer meetings at the start of their deliberations happens in other countries too. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know that... Um, Freedom from Religion Foundation in California, back in May, I think, they won a case against a city council that had been holding Christian meetings, Christian assemblies at the start of their general business, illegally, unconstitutionally, I should say. And more recently, the judge awarded costs against the, the city. So they have recouped all their expenses spent on lawyers mm. and so on mm. so that's, good. That's, that's good news isn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
always topped on the news. John Richards, how you been and what's going on? Oh, you don't have to give us the full news preview, but how are you not stressing yourself out by paying attention to the news? Because I've always synonymously understood news as bad stuff that's happened around the world. Not always. Now, there's some good stuff, too. I put the bad stuff at the beginning and then I left. It. <laughs> it's, it's like a main course and then sweet or dessert. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How you been, my friend? So I've been... I. I haven't personally suffered very much, but I've got children here who have had such sore throats, they haven't been able to speak. It's been so mm. peaceful. <laughs> Not bad. Last week, I got double vaccinated. I did get the influenza and then a COVID booster. I said, don't spread it out. Just give me both of them at the same time. Yeah. Didn't get a I reaction from me. No reaction from either one, aside from just a lightly sore arm. It's like my sixth COVID booster so far. My body's just like, yep, we know what to do. We're done. You're fine. Go out the you door. You didn't get sick like, at all? I didn't get sick at all. No, oh, I did. I've only gotten sick on the third booster, and literally everyone else afterwards just been like, oh, thank you for the free medicine. Oh, yeah. I I've had it. four, and I've gotten sick after every one, I think. Really? Yeah. That's good. I think that's a good thing. I want to have that yeah. immune response. But we'll... Yeah. Yeah. I've, had, I've had four, and I had my last one a week ago. And it was a cocktail. It, it was a little bit for the original COVID and a little bit for okay. the more, more recent one, blended. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Larry Ooh. Rhodes, aside from not getting sick, how else have you been? Oh, you know, I'm pretty good. You know, it's kind of boring. Uh, I put my bike away last week, so I'm not, I don't have it out now. Uh, it'll be next spring, I guess, probably before I get it out. And then just working and playing computer games and this. As long as I'm keeping on keeping on, I feel pretty good at 72. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. Boudreau, how you been? Uh, I have been well. Um, what, it was Halloween since we last talked, right? Truth, yes. <clears throat> so we did our, our third annual candy pult, where kind of in, in keeping with social distancing, we just launch candy to the yeah. kids. But we we really got the physics down. It was uh, me and George. We got the physics uh, down. That's great. We got the we got the physics down. We didn't hit anyone in the face. That's good. okay. We never have. Okay. But um, but yeah, we could get it. We told them where to stand. We had chalk right. line drawn. And I we, imagine we, there would have to be some yeah. sort of like ordinance of that. And then you yeah. have like a three point three point yep. calibration strip to yep. make sure everything's good. And then a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Uh -huh. I can't tell you how many times I told the kid a little bit lower, and they didn't mm. listen. And I Is shot it to him. And they missed it because I was like, I told you, lower. Now, here's the problem. Yeah. What is a consistent projectile? What, what's going on? Ask John Richards first. It was better than mine. Yeah. John Richards, what was going it? At? Did they have to catch it in their mouths? Mm -hmm. No, that would, uh, no, that, that would be too risky because we, I mean, we were launching like, you know, little mini Snickers bars and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So because I, I didn't want to hurt him. It couldn't be like loose bags of M and M's because sometimes yeah. there's one more M and M than the other, and that right. would change the weight distribution and like yeah. more mass with the same amount of energy. It's flying way further than you would expect. It yeah. Has to be like a consistent thing, right? Like Starburst. I mean, it, generally speaking, we had five or six different candy types that we kind of got the hang of, and they all, they all, they, they, really, we were about fifty percent in the okay. bag. But, was so, there, yeah. Was there a toffee apple amongst them? <laughs> wow. <Whoa. clears throat> nice. <laughs> Have you ever thought of uh, publishing in the Journal of Halloween Science? <laughs> no, that's a thing. No, it, I'm sure it exists somewhere, but it'd be a really good article. It is a Halloween now. physical review. It's there if you want to look for it. Speaking of looking for things, we're talking about perspective today, guys. And why are we talking about perspective? Because I saw an enlightening meme on the internet. It was one based on politics, but it did make me think. And the idea was a picture where you had two candidates you can vote for. One was a free Krispy Kreme donut. And the second one was burning down your other's house. And I was like, why are these two things the candidates? But also, why is the distribution of votes like 49.9% and 50.1% or something like that? And I was like, isn't that funny in the way where it always feels like whoever you vote for, you're on the precipice of disaster of going completely the other way. And like, you can look at candidates and see how one is like clearly a better choice than the other, but yet half the population still supports like this terrible outcome that we just barely missed. Like I, I totally understood that idea of the mean, and I was going to the comment section and I was like, why does it always seem like this? Why is my perception that politics, especially when you're voting, because we have voting in America, always seems like these two desperately polarized options, free Krispy Kreme donut, bringing down your grandmother's house. And one of the comments was like, well, it's not always bad 
it's based on your perception because some people could see these two choices as diabetes and killing a house with a billion venomous spiders in it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just a matter of like, how do you look at these two things? And maybe that colors your impression of what side you want to stay on or what things that you're willing to listen to from a particular person or group or dogma. And I'm like, man, doesn't that also apply to religion as well? Yeah. And maybe just because I've been on the secular side for so long, I have a bad perception on the religious point of view. Maybe I've lost touch with that. What do you think, John? I've got stuff to say about this. Go on ahead, go on ahead. (laughs) Well, a perception is purely subjective, isn't Mm -hmm. it? It's coming from you. And so I don't know why they think it's so important, you know, because you've made it up in your head. It's your perception. It doesn't belong to anybody else. And I met this and it was a surprise to me because, you know, having been brought up in the science regime, that that people even consider it worth thinking about. But I met it for the first serious time when I was debating a Muslim in Manchester University. And he kept saying, from the Islamic perception, Mm. when you're a Muslim, your perception is, well, give me some evidence, you know. That was that was all he had. You can watch this debate. It was well recorded by the Islamic Society at the university. And that was all he put. I was giving evidence. You know, this right. is why this is why we've got the evidence. It's here. Anybody can see it. You know, given the right opportunity. And he was saying, well, my perception is this. <laughs> why? Why do you see it that way? I get that you, I'm not even disagreeing that you have that perception, but is it meritable? Is there a justification behind it? Can you demonstrate any of it? Or is it just an uninformed opinion? What's the difference between that and your perception? Well, what do you think? Well, I was going to point out, and most people don't appreciate this, is that we don't have any direct experience with reality. Um, We are limited to our senses. Right. And our brain interprets those signals and whatnot to the stimuli. And based on our knowledge, uh, based on our our, uh, our um, upbringing, um, we interpret what we experience. And, uh, and, and that, of course, flavors um, our understanding of it. So perception, you know, truly speaking, is not the end result it's the beginning Mm. and uh if perception you know you could have faulty eyesight or you could have uh missing the savory part of your taste buds uh or bad hearing in one ear you know so these all affect perception which then it limits uh or you know has an effect on what our ability to interpret that information is at the end Right. I think our perception is very much informed by how we reason. And if we have a poor means of reasoning the world around us, that will lead to a poor perception. And Mm -hmm. why settle for something that's poor when through some meager effort on your part, you can have a higher standard of evidence, a higher standard of understanding, a better epistemology, if you will. All these things can be beneficial to you and improve your perception, which helps you, directly helps you. Isn't that great? Larry Mm -hmm. Rhodes, what do you think? Yeah, um, no, I was just going to say, uh, about perception and our, our senses, we don't really have a choice. We don't, there's not like something else we can use instead of that. Even if we use machines to measure something, we still have to use our eyes and ears or whatever to, to read mm-hmm. the machine's readout. And that's coming up on this election. This, this really amazes me. I mean, if one side uh, gets votes, then they're fine with it. If the other side gets votes, they're not fine with it. It's got to be a flawed system. Now, if the system is flawed, how come their guy getting votes and winning is fine? Our guy's getting votes and winning is, is fraud. Right. Now, it's like they're going to say, well, yeah, we this system is flawed. What else are we going to use? Just yeah. automatically give one side all the offices just because they are not satisfied with the system? It make it's a double standard. It makes no sense at all. Why should it's their candidate standard. get preference? Right. Yes, it's a double standard. Ahead. It's a double standard. Bujo, what do you think? Yeah. So this makes you think of a. I think it was a cartoon originally, like a like a, a drawing where you've got you know one guy standing by the the number six, 
and another guy standing, you know, be uh, on the other side looking at number nine, and they're right. kind of like arguing. And and I think the point of the cartoon originally was, you know, hey, you know, really don't get mad at the other person. It's all about perspective. And then somebody kind of turned it into a meme, and you've probably seen this, but it's like, no, no, it's not. It's either a six or a nine. We need right. to figure it out. Yeah. Like whoever <laughs> put it down there, whoever yeah. put it there, put it in yeah. a sequence that has right. a, a meaning. But the, but the I think the point of the original thing was, oh, it's all about perspective and we should respect everyone's perspective. And it's kind of right. like we should no. respect people. Now, we don't have to respect their perspective until they, I, they oh, show oh, I love they that. don't deserve it. So, yeah, there's a line. Respect. There's that fine line of respecting a person to the point where you don't want to cause conflict unnecessarily, right? But there's also the need of having perspective on a on a near objective reality, or at least something nominal to the point where you can use it meaningfully and inform actions in a in a informed, empathetic, socially acceptable format. You can't just be like, I think this is okay, and you do it. You have to have that be informed in the context of hopefully a greater society, or at least rationalized to the point where you can actually test it and verify if you're right or wrong about certain things. And that's what I like about math, but also the at math is an abstract tool that we should be applying to real life as well. Like that just means in life, we need to really define our variables. We need to understand who's right, who's wrong. We need, and there is a right and a wrong. And if we don't know what's right yet, we don't know. We need to recognize that as a don't know. We need to come up with better methods to know, but there is right courses of action and we can't sure. necessarily just you know better methodologies than other for justified claims right and and yeah the one that's just like well can't we just all get along it's like yes and we can be right at the same time too we don't have to have we don't have to pick one or the other and it, yeah maybe it is a six or a nine we, i i agree we should fight for that john riches i saw you with your hand what's up yeah well while i agree with dread about um we have to form a representation of reality in our heads I think the representation that we form is bloody good. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do things like play disc golf, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of which, can an English person say bloody on an American radio station? I think that's acceptable. Go on ahead, go on ahead, go on ahead. You get away with it. <laughs> I, I can get worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway the, the, the thing is that... Um, I don't like if there's a big need for interpretation between, you know, the observations and how you have perceived them, mm. then it's more opinion than it is evidence. Because mm. in my in my materialistic world, mm. matching a concept with observations should be just like playing snap, you know? Right. There should be. Right. It, it should be as simple as that. There's no need for any interpretation. It's, is this the same as that? Yes or no? Right. And and like one of my teachers said, it's okay to be wrong as long as you recognize it and are willing to improve a process. And the problem with, you know, <clears throat> being very courteous with perceptions and equivocating all of them is that you are willing to support wrong perceptions as well or bad methodologies. And when we can say this is right and that's wrong, now it's it's good to understand what the process was behind it and improve and get a better process so we can more of us can be right because that's a benefit for everybody. That's that's the step that a, a lot of people are crucially missing when we say, hey, you're wrong. It's like, well, why are you making an argument? I'm yeah. not. I'm trying to improve a process <laughs> here. Dred, what do you think? Well, I, I was going to say just further to the point I was trying to make was that um, that our perceptions are are not infallible and our memories are certainly not infallible right. and i think that's where a lot of people are led astray by their their own sense of um being right about things like seeing seeing things the way they are or remembering things the way they were uh that is just not the case because uh you know our our memories certainly are aren't a recording mm -hmm. it's an act of construction Right. And, right. Uh, and and the more people can recognize that, then they recognize or they have the potential to recognize that they are fallible mm. and that uh, they have to be mindful of how their memories and their perceptions are actually constructions of right. their world, not 
not a direct experience of the world. Or more bluntly, people can be lied to because we don't have that direct access. And self-deceived, right? Self-deceived, yeah, or like deliberately manipulated by those right. who don't have their best mm -hmm. interests at heart, mm -hmm. and but put on a very genuine face and mm -hmm. can absorb time, money, uh, thoughts, advertising, propaganda, political actions against the favor of those who are their most adherent followers. Yeah. We see this every day as part of the perception of a secular-minded body. And it frustrates us, it scares us, it commits us to do actions, to do shows like this. But it's not a against, a, on a personal level, against the people who, you know, who are probably victimized by this or who are adherents to this or psychophants or, or just general supporters or quiet people on the, on the median. We do this show to remind people that it's the, it's the nature of the lack of critical thought that's getting us into worse cases with regard to how we yes. treat each other and how we inform our actions. And if we just rely a bit more on critical thought, regardless of what we think the outcome is, we're, we are proponents for critical thought. If we do critical thinking, things will get better, guaranteed. It may not even be the way how I see it or I want to have it, but I guarantee you if we all do this uniformly, working together on that aspect, we can get much better than where we're at right now. And I'm not saying we're not in a bad place now, but I'm just saying we could be in a much better place now if we all just start through critical thinking. Um, I had a comment before we go to the half. It's from Maximum Cover. He has an idea on prayer. This is his perception on prayer. Uh, Larry, maybe you'd like to touch bases on this. Right. I think Maximum Cover says, I think the perception on prayer is wrong. Prayer works. I keep seeing atheists commenting in various contexts on how prayers don't work. And I do nothing and, and do nothing. And I feel this is dangerous misapprehension of reality. I think it's misappropriation of reality. It's all right. It's all good. In its essence, prayer isn't any different from self-talk. There are messages you repeat to yourself. And that's how we know prayer works. What do you think, Larry? Well, if he's talking about just the generic uh, soothing activity of talking to yourself, sure. Uh, meditation works. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're talking to a, a supernatural being. I'm mm -hmm. glad he clarified that at the end, because when you say the word prayer, you're saying different things to different people. Right. And, uh, you, know, if you, you know, I was coming up about ready to come up with a reason why uh, intercessory prayer doesn't work. But right. no, I agree. He, and there's he been can, some good you can get benefits from it. Huh? Yeah. But yeah. also from meditation or just sitting in quietly in a room. You know, Boudreaux, I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think prayer works in this context? In essence, prayer isn't any different from self-talk. There are messages you repeat to yourself. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you're just down to semantics. Yeah, if, if his right. definition of prayer mm. is, uh, you know, is, is self-talk, then sure. But I think probably what's happening here is yeah. he's trying to smuggle in right. the fact that <laughs> he, he actually is praying to a God and that's what's mm -hmm. doing the work. And right. from his perspective... It's it's speaking to the God that that is that is helping your body. Right, right, right. 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 Love, love to get more thoughts. Dred, what do you think? Well, and I would agree. Um, definitely sounds like a, a smuggle. Um, but uh, the, I mean, there's certainly great meditations and self affirmations um, that help build, you know, your own self esteem, your own self image. Um, ex self examination is a big right. one. Yep. Um, Sam Harris has this great uh, uh, app called Waking Up. Uh, I just <laughs> recently subscribed to it. Um, so yeah, getting yeah mindfulness uh, as opposed to calling it prayer, I think is probably more, more honest. Accurate. Right. More honest. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, John, what do you think? Well, I thought that the the, the idea behind a prayer. Mm. was to achieve something, was to get some desire fulfilled. A bit like a spell. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. And, right. And if, I've always called it witchcraft. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and if it's not that, like, um, what's his name, Maximum Cover seems to be suggesting, if it's right. just uh, hearing oneself talk in one's head, mm. and, and that's, a, let's face it, that's unlikely to achieve any outcome, then... He's using prayer to mean reiteration of concepts I like. Yeah. Hmm. Here's here's my here's my thought. I'm actually this is sort of going back to the equivocation that we were talking to before. These are not the same things. Prayer is talking to, I, in the most used context, 
a different agent than yourself. Self-talk, mm -hmm. which is the same number of syllables, is a completely different concept mm -hmm. than most people and their usage than prayer. Prayer, I'm talking to somebody. I'm praying mm -hmm. to blah, blah, blah. People don't pray to themselves. You pray to who you <laughs> worship to, generally. Yeah. Elsewise, you're just Telepathy. talking to yourself. Right. If yeah. you're praying yeah. to yourself, you're talking to yourself. Just call it self-talk. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add this extra step of baggage. Mm -hmm. And self-talk takes as many syllables to say as prayer. And I do believe in the power of self-talk. It's nice to be able to rationalize. You can talk to yourself out loud. You can do it in your head. You don't have to worship. You don't have to have baggage. You don't have to sit down. And you can do it in any context that you feel appropriate. And it does help you. It's great for it as an organization. But Witchcraft also takes two syllables and involves spells and invocations and stuff like that. Why don't we call prayer witchcraft? If you're willing to call prayer self-talk, then be willing to call witchcraft prayer at the same time too, because they're all in that point, the same thing, but you would probably not want to have that happen. So let's just be clear with what we're talking about here. Self-talk works. And in fact, prayer doesn't work because when you do intercessory prayer for people who are sick and they know they're being prayed for, it causes more stress in their lives and they actually end up worse performing worse than when a placebo is used in its place. Yeah. And actually, we have a scientific study to show that. Result. Yeah, 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 we have multiple. We do that at least once a year. And it's crazy how each time it, it shows clearly that prayer actually makes things worse. Self-talk, great, do it. Prayer, you're actually better off not doing it at all. If you have a problem and you want to pray to get it fixed, just get it fixed. Don't pray to get it done because you might actually be wasting more time in the process. Uh, what we do you guys think? Break. We need that break. Go ahead, <laughs> <on>, Larry. <laughs> Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk for a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City, at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty outside on the deck. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetups. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheists.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and look for a group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. That's right. Ooh, Wombat, guys. where do you want to pick up? Guys, we're jumping back into the matter of perspective. Go ahead, John Richards. Well, I want to pick up on Maximum Cover's thoughts that uh, prayer is just self-talk. <clears throat> Fair self -talk. enough. Let's do it. Yeah. Because recently I had I had a I was flashed by the speed camera. That means different things in America than it does in English. What do you what, what do you mean by flashed? I was photographed by the speed camera. <laughs> I, I ah, entered, okay, okay. I okay, entered. Okay. They had my my uh, what do you call it license plate in your country. We call it registration yeah. number. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I I had my car. I was driving in an unfamiliar town, and mm -hmm. suddenly I was trying to find my way, you know, and, mm -hmm. and trying not to hit anything. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and so I was being very careful. And suddenly, a 30 mile an hour limit sign went past me before I could not register it and react to it. So I was flashed for exceeding the speed limit. Now, if you only exceed it by less than 10%, you don't get um, points on your license. You get a training course. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. So, so I attended this um, driver training course. And one of the tips they gave us was... Talk your way through your driving. What, say what you're doing. You know, say that I'm watching out there some parked cars. There might be something coming out from behind them. And here's a woman crossing the road with a baby and a buggy. Uh, so voice mm. the reality you are experiencing because it helps you to focus on the needs for reacting to it. So maybe that's what Maximum McCover is referring to when he's talking about messages that you repeat to yourself, but it's certainly not what I understand prayer to be. 
Right. But <clears throat> there's also the danger of lack of context because those who have a favorable position by the misinformation of a, a statement will continue to use that as ammunition to support their cause or their, their creed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's saying prayer works. I think the atheist perception on prayer is wrong. And I think atheists are commenting and blah, 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 how prayer doesn't work. We are talking about different things if you're not talking about what we're talking about. Yeah. And you are trying to equivocate self-talk and prayer <clears throat> the same thing. I don't yeah. think that's a, a, a fair equivocation. I feel like they clearly mean different things. And if they don't, be willing to call witchcraft prayer because we hold that in the same context. It's a spiritual uh, communication to something that's not to yourself. Anyway, Larry, what do you think? I would like to ask him what he thinks of public ostentatious prayer, like the mm. prayers that open meetings or the prayers yeah. that Not everybody fair. join into after school, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. If it's just self-talk, then it's not prayer. It's right. not what they're doing. What, what are they exactly. doing? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And why do they have to hold up an entire, you know, uh, political Class. meeting yeah, to meeting. do stuff like that? Uh, Bujo, I think I saw you. Yeah, no. So this makes me think of the idea that all of his evidence is on invisible things right mm -hmm. so the 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 thing that they're praying for it's not like you're praying for a pot of gold and it appears right or you're praying to to grow back a, a, an arm that's been amputated those right. are you know those are things that all yeah. all of us atheists would be like yep yeah, okay yeah prayer works yeah but, if we saw that yeah <clears throat> absolutely it's like, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, evidence that great. we're using here is stuff that's invisible it's like you know, oh, I feel better. Completely subjective, right? Right. And right. not to mention, you know, we think that self-talk actually is is at play here and and doing the good. So it, it it's not set up for um uh something we can study. It's just it's, yeah, it's just words. Great job, Budro, because I can't self-talk an arm to grow back from my elbow yeah. if I lose it. I can't yeah. self-talk a dead family member back to life. Mm -hmm. So am I really praying at that point? I, I, or am I really talking to myself? And if it's something that I can control and manage in my own life, like something I can test, something I can do through my own volition, I just need motivation for, why am I wasting time with prayer? I can just get that with self-talk. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and would he go as far to say intercessory prayer, prayer doesn't work? <laughs> I mean, he's saying you know, it's not prayer. Right, right, right. We got to make sure we just have these well-defined variables. So of like how we were talking at the beginning of the show with math, six and nine, it's good to know what we mean when we say things, because like our perception, we have a compromise of understanding when we take an idea, convert it into words and give it to somebody else to hopefully have the same ideas we had. That is a work of compromise. So it's very clear that we very well define our variables so that there's no misunderstanding or unnecessary equivocation between terms that are not the same. And yeah. self-talk and prayer are not the same terms. If, uh, if you could pray a, a dismembered limb back into life, you'd go up in my estimation. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me which God you're praying to then. And if you're praying to yourself, maybe we get you on the on the talking. You know, yeah, this yeah when do we get you on the news? Table. That's what I want. Why should we yeah. why should we limit that to growing back limbs? I want a third arm coming out of my chest. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Science think can help you with that. No, science can help you with that. So think how think how useful wings would be. Yeah. No, no, no. We don't want wings. All right, all right. We're moving on. Do we have wings? Are so unless you know how much energy it would take to fly? That's there's like just course, staying course. up in the air is just like man, like a hummingbird. They have no, to flap their wings. You'll, like you have to have about twenty thousand calories a day. I couldn't. Now, if you could no, eat yeah, more, no, no. that's fantastic. No. There's a lot of people. We'd all no, run out no. of food immediately no, no. You, like that. You guys are being <laughs> boringly practical. These are magic <laughs> wings. They work magic with wings. no energy. Oh, uh, these are magic oh, wings. Think oh, how many okay, lives okay, they've okay. saved from falling. You, know, you just, yeah, just pop your wings out and fall. <laughs> Give me teleportation. You mean I have to fly to work now? It's just like, dang it. <sighs> you know, down the highway. Yeah. Many years ago, home. many years uh. ago when my now 15 year old daughter was a little toddler she mm. went to a party it was an it was an angel or cherub party or something in the dress that they have to wear you know and she came back they'd given her some wings in which you you put your arm through these elasticated bands and there are these little wings on the back and when she got home she ran around in the garden trying to get off the ground what adorable kid it was so cute Guys, I have another uh, potential equivocation here. And this is by Aztec Summer, who asks, would I be considered Islamophobic or anti-Semitic if I am anti-religion? 
And I think that's an interesting question. So uh, how about this? Um, I'll, I'll try to do a quick weighing in. Similar to how we had like with prayer and self-talk, they are different things. You might even be able to try to categorize them in the same thing, and that could be more fair, but these are two different terms, and they mean different things. And Islamophobic and, and, and anti-Semitic versus anti-religion, I feel like are three different concepts, two of which are sort of falling into like a, a prejudice point of view, whereas one is is strictly not against the person or the culture, but about a dogmatic means of thinking the ideas that is not tied to any particular group because a person would be anti-religious if they were a scientologist and a white guy or a scientologist and and a brown guy it doesn't really matter it's just like i hate this train of thinking that's the problem that's why i'm anti-religion and i am anti-religion i i I generally don't support it but there are definitely atheistic religions and in my head it's just like you're you're taking an extra step to get to the same place i'm at (laughs) jed what do you think well, I, I was going to add to that. Uh, I used to be a Freemason, mm. and I, I probably mentioned this before. Um, but uh, when I had come to realize that I no longer believed in the Christian God, I spoke to one of the senior fellows at the lodge and and told him that and told him I, I just felt that I could no longer be a, a Mason in good conscience. And he says, oh, you're one of those guys that hate God. I was like, no, that's your you're you're making an assumption about what i think or what i feel without directly asking me you know um it's it's a conflating two ideas that that don't belong to one another in in the same way that a person who claims this is an atheist is not islamophobic or anti-semitic it's just it's a it's a different thing entirely right right it's a much more charged thing uh john richards what do you think yeah well i'm going to agree with both of you <clears throat> because if you are anti-Semitic and, and Islamophobic, then you mm. are anti-theistic. You are against religion, but you've gone a step further. You've right. decided to victimize these people and demonize them. And that's not necessary. It's not a compulsory part of not believing in a religion. Right. Actually, and it can also be- actually it's more pointed than that, I think. It's, it's the difference between ad hominem right attacking the person yeah. or attacking the idea so yeah. it also leads I, I, re- I respect i respect the right of people to believe in what they want mm-hmm. but i don't have to respect the specific belief that's right. what i can attack i also hate the hypocrisy that can come with being islamophobic when you can also be very genial to christian ideology it's like oh i just hate this imaginary mm-hmm. guy but i love my imaginary yeah. guy i was like well that yeah. double standard is just as problematic Whereas yes. anti-religion is sort of like, it's a firm, grounded understanding of these are the things that I don't like. Everything falls into it, but anything outside of it that's like person-based doesn't apply to it. It's just mm-hmm. this very consistent platform. Boudreaux, love to get your thoughts on this and your previous comment. What What do you think? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how how you were tying that in, but but my, my thoughts would be that first off, anti-religion, can we have a little asterisk on that and say, except the flying spaghetti monster just just to be clear <laughs> i'm anti-religion you know with the exception of flying so, spaghetti monster i got some problems with spaghetti because it's a lot of carbs i like my protein content to be a lot higher than that but i respect people Blast who eat, eat a lot of <laughs> pasta i'm totally fine with that but if i only have that to eat and beer and as an asexual stripper poles don't really do stripper factories don't do that mm-hmm. much for me anyway there's not a lot calling me there but i totally respect people doing it so like yeah. go for it Anyway, so, <laughs> so I, I totally agree with 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 you guys on 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 the point. You know, we're anti-religion is very different than, or, or anti um, uh, uh, specific religion is, is very different than um, you know uh, uh, being being racist or prejudiced. But I would point out that someone famous has stood up against, and Dread Pirate probably knows where I'm going with this. Has stood up against um, someone who was. Um, against religion calling him an islamophobe getting really angry on live tv oh um, yes and that was ben, ben affleck, affleck. yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah, he sam attacked, attacked sam harris pretty hard for uh you know really again just like you guys said and ty said in the beginning it, you're you're challenging the dogma the ideas not the people right. Right. like anti-muslim is so di- very different than anti-islam i mean that's right. those are two yes yeah so yeah 
And I have a, so not to do these weird qualifications, but my sister's Muslim and I love my sister and she knows that I'm an atheist and she, from her own religion is supposed to look at me as like, you're an apostate, you're not part of our faith, you're outsider, but we love each other. It's so much more of a better understanding of like, hey, I'm not on board with the messaging, but we love the person underneath. You can separate those two. And I think what religion is really good at is making people identify with the message when there really is a person behind that. And it's hard to separate those two. That's my thought. And it's also weird too, because John Richards, I saw your hand, but it's also weird because when a religious person looks at an atheist, they're like, well, you are in a religion too. It's like, no, no, no. Yes. Atheism is not a religion. There's no dogma here. It's a position I have as a person that I'm also willing to dismiss or get rid of as soon as I have good evidence. It's a weird situation where people have to immediately identify with an idea. John Richards, what's up? Well, I want to <clears throat> use this opportunity to segue back to our uh, part one subject of perception. Because I'm wondering whether our attitude towards anti-theism and then and, and then specific religious hatred mm. is something that's peculiarly perceived by non-believers, whereas believers perceive themselves to be in the right religion, and therefore it's legitimate to hate all the other religions. Mm. Uh, because, you know, that's what their God wants them to do. It's right. Religion is inherently divisive. Right, right, right. And uh, it, it, it ambiguifies who the person is who's holding the religion because they have to be part of a flock. Yeah. Larry, sorry for not getting to you. <laughs> What's up? It's okay. Uh, well, the thing about it is uh, one, one is ideas and the other is people. People right. have rights and deserve respect until such time as they don't. They prove that they, they don't deserve respect. But Ideas don't deserve respect simply for being. They constantly change and they have to constantly be reevaluated to see how they affect people. Yeah. So it's a whole difference between people and, and ideas, and one deserves respect automatically, the other doesn't. Right. And, it, and the benefit of, I feel like a lot of Christian, a lot of Islam, or, uh, you know, a lot of grounded popular religions piggyback on the concept of, well, if you identify with this religion, then all the rights you have as a person are now applied to the religion as well. And therefore you can't challenge the religion because that's uh -huh. seen as a bad thing. Right. And we that have an inherent way. rights and because we're part of this person and we should be part of this governing body because this governing body controls the people and we are part of the people as well. It's like, no, that's the infestation of, you know, dogma that seems nice. The perception that we have of secular minded people is that this is infiltrating the common good of rights of man and women, of course, and everything else in between. It's the religion that's trying to piggyback on a lot of stuff that it doesn't have a right to have. And why do we yeah. give it to it so without a fight? Why do we let these, you know, council members start, you know, why do we let council members who have these beliefs come into council in the first place? They're voted mm -hmm. in, sure. But now why do they get the chance to, you know, orchestrate their religious beliefs in front of everyone at the beginning of every council mm -hmm. meeting? Like, that's such a, a gross overuse of their power and overstepping of, like... Yes everyone else's yeah. interests yeah. that's when, yeah. when rights gonna, um, privilege hmm. right yeah, i was going to point out a couple of things here too is uh you know and again this is just reiterating but, but putting it in a different way is uh, you know there's human rights which should be respected but you don't need to respect the content <laughs> right <laughs> you know you can you can respect the right to be for people to publish books but you don't have to respect the content you don't have to like it um and i was going to say also uh just to uh tyrone uh, tyrone uh, you said your sister is a muslim mm. and characterized you as an uh, apostate because so, an apostate is someone who previously believed in islam and yeah. stopped believing that's actually right. an apostate so <laughs> that's probably the better way of saying it yeah, yeah. well we can just go with that yeah so my, my family is very weird i have a mother who's a jehovah witness I have a sister who's a Christian. I have another sister who's a Muslim. And so when we all pray or not pray around the Thanksgiving table, it's a very weird procession of messages going down different wires, I can imagine. So very weird, very weird for everybody. Is there uh, a Ouija board involved? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom wouldn't allow the Ouija board because of her truth. It's, it's always these weird level devils, the, um, steps for everything. Yeah, it's always very interesting. Um, so I got one more question that we'll go through. 
Uh, this one comes from Cosmic Cherry. It's more of an open-ended discussion. Um, it's based on the idea of, hey, as I became more atheist or more outside of my religion, uh, outside of that dogma, I started seeing people differently. That's how my perception changed. So here's the comment. Being religious has warped my perception of reality. I grew up in a heavily Catholic family. Throughout my life, my mom has been saying that she's against indoctrination, yet she and my dad have been doing that to me my entire life. Ooh. Even though I'm now an atheist, I still get this awful feeling that something is watching me from time to time. Her indoctrination has made it so hard for me to unlearn this stuff. Yeah. Is anyone else having these same issues? Boudreaux, you grew up uh, heavily Catholic. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I did heavily, maybe, maybe, you know, uh, mom, mom Catholic. very Catholic. Uh, we did Catholic church, Catholic mass, um, when even Wednesday, like Catholic development. Wow. Uh, and and I had the same thing for a while after even after um, calling myself an atheist, which took a little while too. Mm. Um, I had this the uh, feeling of um, somebody watching, and I was very very uh, late to to actually be willing to say GD, um, which I can't say on the radio, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, mm. I, I, I I even as an atheist, I had a I would I would sing lyrics to a song that had it in it, and I would <clears throat> swap the words out for something else. <laughs> um, really, it took it took a while. I know. And then, I know. Yeah. <clears throat> I I yeah. think I've said on the radio before too that like i really struggled with like reading you know any of the great atheist authors books on airplanes i felt right. very uncomfortable for a little while um mm -hmm. that's all gone now uh i have to safely right. say so whoever whoever posted the comment be patient it, it, it didn't take too long but it, right. it it should fade it should fade good when i was in yeah. when i was in uh, tennessee near knoxville i had gotten a decal on my car it was the american atheist logo and the day I put it on my car, I was filled with a bunch of apprehension because, you know, atheism was like this thing mm -hmm. that I wanted people to know. I wanted to like people to know that about me, but I was also terrified about like immediate retribution if I were to like post this. And most people I imagine didn't even interpret it correctly, right? Like my Muslim sister I was talking about, she thought it was just a science atom or something like that. And when yeah. I explained to her American atheist, she was just like, oh, okay, I, I get it. But in my head, I was just incredibly paranoid about how everyone was perceiving me. And I didn't want to have to deal with repercussions like a scratched up car or, or anything. But when nothing happened, I was just like, maybe there aren't as many people looking at me as I once thought. And I'm like, there's my brain thinking about like the Christian point of view, because in the Christian mindset, you're always being watched and you're always God's favorite yeah. project that you worked on. So you're used to that sense of paranoia. Mm -hmm. But it took a while for me to give that up, even when I yeah. was an atheist to the point mm -hmm. where I was. Takes a while. People. Yeah. Larry, what do you think? Oh, definitely. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's been 50 years since I uh, lost my religion, but I remember the first couple of years, you know, you, you go to a meal, you feel like you need to pray. Uh, you um, just you know, have the feeling that you're being watched all the time. It, it's a hard thing to shake and you have to worry. I mean, you still have worries about hell and stuff, but you, you just grapple with it logically and realize that, um, none of this one makes sense or two has any evidence to support it and uh, after a while it, you know it fades it goes away and remember yeah. that there's a there's a group out there that is there to help you if you're having trouble souls. living re religion souls, no. and everybody has them no it's called the group is called uh recovering from religion and you can find them at recovering from religion.org okay well guys i'm i'm lucky in that i was never not even inducted, let alone indoctrinated into wow. a religion. But I'm I'm pleased that you guys have managed to escape because, and without terrible harm, because some people are left with actual PTSD as a yes. result as a result of the, sure. the harm that was. It's I think it's child abuse. Mm. And but going back to the beginning of what this um, listener said. Um, his mother didn't recognize or her mother didn't recognize that she was doing indoctrination. Well, they don't, do they? I mean, it's like nobody will accept that they're in a cult. They'll point right. to other people and say, that's a cult. But what right. I mean is not a cult. Right. Yeah. right. How quick are religious people to point out cults in the world? And as an atheist, you just have to smile and be like, yeah, huh? Okay. How are we defining mm -hmm. that? I'll just keep that to myself. But yeah. It's anyway, the, very the, the idea of somebody watching 
all the time <laughs> is in the city these days coming true in the form of security cameras. Yeah, mm -hmm. big brother. Yeah, <laughs> but hopefully, right. hopefully it's not um, some terrible mm -hmm. irrational power. Dred, let's get your final thoughts on this before we close up. What do you think of the idea of still bucking the trend or the idea of being watched even after you become an atheist? Yeah, I I, I guess I, I haven't really felt that and I can't even remember feeling that so much. Okay. Um, I had, uh, during my religious experience, you know, uh, as a kid growing up in Catholic school, you know, as a Catholic and, and uh other sort of things I dabbled in searching for spiritual uh, spirituality. Um, it was always a hope to have someone looking at me. I just never got that feeling. So um, when I finally divested that myself of that, it, it wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't looking over my shoulder. It was just uh, an acknowledgement that really I'm on my own and uh there's no one there. Uh, I don't have a guardian angel or mm. or a, a deity uh, looking after me. Oh, I only terrible. have the quab. I have only the quab pushing me down onto the earth with his newly <laughs> appendages, and that's it. And you got your hope that somebody was watching you fulfilled when you started to tread the boards of the stage. Tread. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had the same hope, and and I achieved it by becoming a teacher you know the only one who stands up facing the other way in a classroom right yeah guys what a wonderful conversation we're now at the end of the show love to see what everyone would love to think about or have our listeners think about over next week before we come back john richards anything you'd like to plug yeah the usual um oh uh, and an extra because i i did a debunking of stephen mayer i don't think i've mentioned this before but it's it's had quite a few views people like it so nice. take a look at Free Thought Channel. I've put I put the Stephen Mayer debunking in prime position. But of course, we also have the regular Free Thought Hour with an interesting guest. We had it was about digital currency yesterday, and we have Global Atheist News, and we have Views on the News, which is going to happen in a few hours' time. Uh, in fact, what is it in uh, uh, three hours' time for you guys who are in a different time zone? And uh, your, some of you will be taking part in that. Wonderful. Yes, very good. Dread Pirate, anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, if um, I, I live stream this at, uh, at now it's 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time Saving Time. Early, right? Yeah. PST, yeah. So 7 a.m. PST on my uh, channel, Mind Pirate. Um, I've been given a handle now. YouTube came up with uh, channel handles. So you can just look for Mind Pirate, and uh, I'll be there on YouTube. Like and subscribe if you uh, if you like it. Fujo, anything you recommend we check out? Uh, you know, I, I don't usually have stuff to to plug, but but it, because of our conversation, I'd like to encourage. I imagine everybody here has already done so, but if you haven't, I think something really important is if you've got the Facebook profile, make sure you put atheist down for your religious views. Is that does everyone do that? Yeah, hey, I have not a bad idea. Uh, Post fairy makes sense. Do, do, yeah, I, I, it took me. That was something that took, I struggled with, too, because that's a very, very blatant way to. I mean, it's kind of nestled into your about page or whatever, so you have to go looking for it. But I suspect I've got friends that have seen it and been like, "Ooh, scary!" <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> hey, why not? And next Halloween, you just dress up as yourself and be like, "What are you for Halloween? I'm an atheist." <laughs> Whoa! Oh, terrifying. Yeah. He's thinking for himself. But you uh, seem so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, get that. I get that a lot. Guys, um, you can find me on Let's Chat on YouTube. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel handle is now at Doubter5. And you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye.